and we'll stop watching the numbers rise. coming in. Hey everybody, welcome to the annual general meeting. We're going to get started in just a moment, letting everybody in to where the numbers are rising. So thank you all for coming. Your board is ready and waiting for you. And we have a packed agenda. So, and please feel free to use the chat. Um, and like with our other meetings, this one is being recorded for posterity and only the panelists, which is the board tonight, um, we're the only ones who will be visible unless you are a committee chair and you are giving your report. Okay, so you'll just see us and you can switch it to gallery view or speaker view and wherever you want to have it, whether you want to have all the faces or just, just the speaker at the time. So hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Wait another couple more minutes until everyone gets in. And I trust everyone is well. I wish I could see everybody. Okay, so. And the numbers are still going up. So a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. The and so far we've got 76 people. Okay, there it is. All right, so what we're going to do, we'll have the chat for just general discussion and Mike Morgenthau will be keeping an eye on that and then during the um, the <laughs> very cute Matt Baker. Sorry, I see the chat go by. And then during the um, committee reports, you can put questions into the Q and A, and the panelists will be able to see them, and will help moderate that. Yes, we are. I am sure we want to see everybody, and so is Christina. We all want to see everybody. <laughs> uh, everybody. All right. A couple more people are coming in, and then. We will get started. Okay, so let's get going and welcome everyone to GANIC's annual general meeting. This is the Mandatory meeting we have every single year to go over committee reports and to go over the GANIC budget and to give you all an update of um, all the doings and all the happenings that have been going on over the past, um, basically over the past nine months. It's been eventual, eventful in a, in a bizarre 2020 kind of way. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll, I'll go over the agenda and then we'll go, I'll give my report and um, we'll go through the meeting. We'll go through the agenda right now. But just to remind everyone, this meeting is being recorded. So you'll be able to see this uh, afterwards. It will be posted onto our YouTube page. If you have questions uh, for specific committee members, uh, for specific committee chairs, you can put them in the Q&A or you can also use the chat. And those two parts are going to be moderated throughout the meeting. Uh, remember how to use, when you use the chat, please remember to send it to everyone or you can send it just to the panelists or you can send it to a specific person. But if you want everyone to see it, do be sure to say um, to all panelists and attendees, that gets everybody, okay? So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen and we'll go over, first thing is we'll go over the agenda, okay? so. Welcome everybody. And 
the agenda. Oh, hold on a second. So um, you'll see we have industry partner votes. We'll be voting on three different um, applicants for industry partner, Vox Systems, Easy Charter Bus, and Ally Charter Bus. You all have received notifications about, about those, about that vote. And so I hope you've all done your research and you will be sent an email to vote. We'll then have the committee reports and you can see everyone who's going to be reporting. If you are going to be reporting, what I'll do is I'll make you a panelist and you will be able to appear on screen and give your report. Then we'll have a vote on the constitutional amendment. That's why Jonathan Torer, who is of the constitutional committee, he will give his report last. So we can go right into the vote on the constitutional amendment and then a uh, notification of new addition and changes to organic bylaws. And in voting on the organic bylaws and the constitution, well, the organic bylaws is for a discussion. The constitutional amendment is for, um, is a vote and you will also receive those via email. Those are um, public votes, okay? So your name will appear uh, just as we do in a um, regular AGM, everyone just raises their hand. They're not anonymous votes. The industry partner vote is anonymous. The vote on the constitutional amendment is not. Then we will have the budget presentation. Okay, the budget presentation and vote on that. Again, that will not be anonymous. Jer Jeremy will go through all of the numbers and he has done a fabulous, fabulous job. It's really, it's really wonderful. So you'll be able to get all the details and information about that from Jeremy. And then at the end, um, any final questions, any concluding remarks, okay? So that is, um, that is our agenda. So without further ado, let's just talk about the past um, nine months. And really there's no need to say it's been a year unlike any other. And um, Patrick actually thought of this as wonderful. Uh, you know, New York went on pause, but we did not. Gannick most definitely did not pause. But to step back a moment, you know, this year it started out, you know, beautifully with our usual um, post-holiday holiday party. Um, that was on January 13th at the Novotel in Times Square. I remember it was a very chilly night, so the Times Square looks like kind of empty, but it was a wonderful occasion and a wonderful time for all of us to get together. And whenever I see pictures of all of us together, I always get rather uh, nostalgic for the days when we could actually touch each other. Um, and then of course, in January, uh, we have to, um, we need to remember, of course, Lee Gelber, um, the beloved Dean of New York City Tour Guides who passed away on January 19th. And he was, a mentor um, to so many of us. He really um, was the face of guiding in um, New York City. And there you can see um, his obituary by Sam Roberts in the New York Times and then Lee at the Apple Awards and giving his um, really his wonderful, wonderful uh, Triangle Shirtwaist Factory tour. And of course, Lee will be sorely missed. And we had a, a beautiful celebration of him up at Woodlawn in the Bronx. Um, in February, Gannick went to Charleston for the NFTGA, the National Federation of Tourist Guides Association's um, biannual meeting. Uh, over 20 guides attended from Gannick. And Michael Dillinger, uh, our former pre president of Gannick, was elected to vice president of the NFTGA. And he's been doing great things there ever since. Also in February, we had International Tour Guide Day in Chinatown, um, where we went to MOCA, to the Museum of the Chinese in America, and um, also hung out for a really fun happy hour in Chinatown. And it was a great way to show support for the community, which was already feeling the effects of COVID-19 and what was happening in Wuhan um, in China. So this was in February. And in March, of course, we had our wonderful Apple Awards. March 2nd were our sixth annual Apple Awards, including the newly named Lee Gelber Guiding Spirit Award. And um, it was a wonderful, wonderful event as it always is. And on March 11th was a great tour organized by Mark Landman of the Croton Aqueduct. On, and that was the last uh, FAM tour we did um, before COVID-19 hit, before the lockdown on March 12th, um, as um, AJ named it Red Thursday, which I think is very apropos. 
and uh, everything shut down. And so, of course, here's our city, you know, during the lockdown, nobody's there, nobody was around. And, um, you know, I don't need to tell you all, of course, it was very hard on everybody. And the worst was losing three of our own, um, Judy Richheimer, Laurel Douglas, and William Helmreich. And may their memories be a blessing. These were three pillars of Gannick, three wonderful, wonderful uh, people, wonderful guides. And um, I know I speak for everybody when I say they are really sorely, sorely missed. So of course, Judy, Laurel, and uh, William. But Gannick did not stop. The board did not stop. And starting in March and April, the board and all the committees have been working literally nonstop to empower and to inform all Gannick members. And um, Gannick has really become a leader in the tourism industry in the United States. And all of our proactive work on behalf of you guys, on behalf of all our members, it has been noticed. And it's, um, it's quite gratifying to get um, con to be contacted by other guides associations who they say, oh, we want to see what New York is doing. So we've been really a leader in, in that. And uh, we've held uh, numerous online events, um, our monthly meetings, um, PDPs, virtual tours, um, getting media coverage for the plight of guides. And here are just some examples of some of the things that Gannick and Gannick guides did um, from our virtual tours, Zoom tours, um, Facebook lives, interviews. We did an uh, um, collaboration with the Guild of DC on Alexander Hamilton and the presentation of the founding fa father. Um, we've had then the musical and we've had um, so many guys working online from blogs to vlogs to videos to um, all sorts of different things. So, you know, nothing is, is staying still. And the board um, literally was meeting at the beginning my, we were meeting once a week, we were having board meetings once a week, but we were in constant communication and we still are. And I can tell you every single day, uh, we, the board members are always talking about something guide um, and guiding related. In fact, sometimes we have to tell each other, no, we're all gonna take some days off and not do GANIC because it's really um, something that we do and we do it out of service for all of you. And this is something that we are really passionate about and really enjoying as well. Um, Gannick has issued 12, uh, 20 Virgils now. Uh, this is the guide for guides and it's edited uh, beautifully by Christina Lombardi, our board member at large. I hope you all are receiving it. And then we are keeping track of and keeping tabs of, of all the virtual events and the um, online th happenings right on the Gannick website. And treasurer Jeremy Wilcox has been updating this list regularly. So it's always up to date. You can always find the links right there on the Gannick website. Um, our meetings have all gone to Zoom and they're also available online as are our PDPs. And we've had some wonderful professional development programs. Uh, thanks so much to the Education Committee and to Vice President Bob Gelber. Um, just today we had part two of the um, tour mar guide marketing PDP, and um, we've had presentations by producers of apps and technology, as well as how to make good virtual tours. And these are all recordings that are all available to, um, to you. Our meetings have included expert guest speakers from a variety of fields, from unemployment insurance and accounting to wellness, health and safety, a temporary job agency, and many more. And in June, of course, about the end of May, beginning of June, the Black Lives Matter movement really shook our city and sort of shook us all out of um, perhaps being a little too complacent about things that were going on. And um, Gannick issued an official statement um, in support of Black Lives Matter. And our July meeting was a wonderful roundtable discussion on diversity and racism and tour guiding. And we were honored and so lucky to have special guests, Stacey Toussaint, Eric Washington, and Kamau Wari speaking to us. And we also started a subcommittee on diversity and that's headed by member at large, Kevin Lawrence. And we ran a survey to get more information about the demographics of our, um, of our association and to make sure that um, we, you know, we are keeping up to date and we know what's happening in our own organization and how to improve. Now, Gannick has been in the news and on the media on New York One most recently, on ABC7 as well, on promoting tourism. And we're very, very active also on social media, 
from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram. So make sure you're always tagging Yannick um, and use our hashtags and so people can get the word out and they can know what's happening um, with our great organization. One of the most important things we did was our health and safety task force put together industry-wide standards for guides, guests, and tour operators. These are available on our website. You are welcome to um, print them out, to share them, to copy them. And this task force was led by Patrick Casey and John Semlack, our secretaries, who did a fabulous job with it. Deb Blau um, was our graphic designer on the project, and it's really very legible. It's got, you know, really pops out. And um, really special thanks to Sarah Lyons. Now, this is a great thing. This is what makes Gannick such a wonderful organization. Sarah is a new member and she jumped right in feet first and put in countless hours to help develop the guidelines. And she's really a great example of the can-do spirit um, that we have in all our members and that we're so lucky to have. Now, the health and safety was launched. And right after that, we have Tour Your Own City. And so speaking of Can Do members, it's really Mike Morgenthal who led the development and the launch of Tour Your Own City. First with help with from Amada Anderson, um, now in Florida um, with her new family and, and countless, countless hours of video editing and photography um, from Megan Murad, um, who's done a great job and she's been taking care of the social media for Tour Your Own City while um, Jeremy is doing the regular um, organic um, PR work. So, you know, this is a huge initiative. This is really a wonderful thing that we have. And over 100 tours um, have been listed already. So I hope you're taking advantage of that. So we're out, we're out and about. We're starting to tour with our masks, all colors, all sizes, all kinds of patterns and going to some of the first places of the opening from the Statue of Liberty to recently our museums are opening as well. So the city is starting to come back to life. We have um, indoor dining as we've been given the okay for that for the end of the month, fingers crossed. We'll see um, what happens with that. But it's been so wonderful to see fam tours finally taking place. And I think Joe Svalak and Robin Gar have it exactly right. They're keeping their social distancing. We are not kidding about that. And then just last week, um, Stan brought everyone up to Fort Tryon Park where they saw the most magnificent sunset um, looking across the Hudson River to the Palisades to New Jersey. They don't know that I was standing there waving like mad the entire time, but here's a wonderful photo of guides all together. Now, how can we do all this? How do we do all this? Well, we can do it really because of this, um, this gang here. These guys, I cannot tell you, I cannot tell everybody, and I cannot emphasize this um, more. You are all so lucky to have this board. I am so lucky to have this board. I'm the one who's always talking all the time. They're the ones who are doing all the work. The Gannick board has been fabulous. And so what we do is really for all of you. This is what your membership gets you. It gets you people harassing each other via Facebook Messenger or random texts, you know, chatting back and forth. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's tweak a document 80 million times and then tweak it one more time because somebody else will notice something that's just off. Let's think of something new. Let's find a new contact. Let's find a new way to get the word out that guides are ready to work, that we want to work, and that our city you know, no matter how many people say New York is dead, it's really, really not dead. We had a, you know, a hard time, but we got through it. Okay. We're getting through it. And all of you, you have these wonderful, wonderful people who've got your back 24 seven and who are thinking about guides and thinking about guiding this entire time. So Vice President Bob Gelber, Vice President Mike Morgenthal, Treasurer Jeremy Wilcox, Recording Secretary Patrick Casey, Corresponding Secretary John Semlack, and our members at large, Deborah Blau, Kevin Lawrence, and Christina Lombardi. I, I, there should be a huge round of applause. I hope everybody is clapping like mad. I'll, you know, I'll be clapping here too, because it's really thanks to the board. And like I said before, we do this for all of you. And um, it's giving you as much bang for the buck as we can for your membership 
Um, it's keeping all of us from going stir crazy. Um, all of us have had various terse words from our families who are saying, what do you mean you're doing something else organic? This is keeping us going. I get a huge energy out of knowing that I'm doing something that I can be proactive. And so like Patrick said, and I quoted him at the beginning, New York went on pause. We did not, and we are not stopping now. So thank you all. And thank you so much to my wonderful, wonderful board. It's really, this is just, uh, it's been a great bunch to work with. And, um, and I look forward to the next couple months. Hopefully things are are going to be improving. I just, you know, we had an earthquake today. There are fires where Mike is. I mean, I'm waiting for the locusts to start. But anyway, and if it, even that happens, we'll still get through it. So thank you all. I'm going to stop sharing right now. Okay, let me go back. Okay, so um, yeah, so that was my little report. And I will um, share the slides with everybody and with our reports um, when, when everything is concluded and everything will be posted. So thank you for that. And thank you all for participating. You know, GANIC is also all our members, 300 plus strong, um, going out there and doing great things. So without further ado, we're going to move right along. I'm a little behind, but we're going to start now with our industry partner vote. So um, that's Mike, our Chair of Industry Relations, if you want to unmute yourself and just let everybody know what we're voting on, that would be great. Great. Thank you. And thank you, Emma, for everything you're doing for organic to My help pleasure. kind of keep the board focused and moving all in the same direction. So, uh, so uh, we appreciate everything that you've done as well, absolutely. Um, so tonight we have uh, three votes uh, or three industry partner applicants. Uh, Vox Networks, which is the wireless uh, company that you can use while on tour. And I'm going to mention one other thing about them in a second. And then two charter bus companies who just found us via Google search, believe it or not. Um, so uh, you'll be getting, in fact, let me publish the ballot right now. So you will be getting an email. All full voting members of Gannick will get a vote, uh, get a ballot now from your Wild Apricot uh, system. Uh, if you've been on any of the other previous votes, you can certainly, uh, you, you know how it works. Uh, the websites for each of the companies are listed there. We will leave the poll open until basically overnight, just like we have with all of the other, um, all of the other industry partner votes that we've had so far. Uh, I did want to just make one mention for Vox. Uh, Mark Collenbrander, who is their, I think, U.S. Director of Sales and who I've been coordinating with, uh, some of you might know that for July and August, they offered use of their Vox Connect app, which is the app that you can use with your smartphone, no other equipment necessary to communicate with your guests on tour. It was complimentary. And then it was basically a one day license anytime you need to use it for however many users you needed it for that day. Uh, the price was planned to be $25. Well, this week, Mark emailed me and he said that because things are going a little bit smaller and groups tend to be smaller. Vox is offering that service to members of GANIC uh, for $12.50 per day, not $25, which is what non-GANIC guides would have to pay. Uh, he's offering this to all tour guide associations across the country, not just GANIC, but basically it's a special for tour guide associations. So we'll send out an email with details on how to sign up. Either you can email Mark directly and you, or you can uh, visit voxnetworkusa.com. That's voxnetworkusa.com. I'll type that into the chat room right now. Um, and uh, other than that, you were all notified about the three uh, candidates for, uh, for industry partner tonight. So hopefully you had a chance to review. You should be getting the ballot right now, if not already. And um, yeah, vote and uh, hopefully we'll have three new industry partners. Great. And of course, this is a chance if any of the members have any questions or comments about any of the industry partners, uh, this is a chance to type something into the chat room, I suppose. Yeah, any, if anybody has questions, yeah, please add it um, to the, the Q&A, you can just any specific questions about this. And then like Mike said, he'll send more details about the Vox system, um, which sounds like a great deal. 
Okay. All right. So you can still put those in because don't forget you can, um, you will be um, voting um, via email. Okay. So um, Mike, what do you think? As long as the meeting's open, if somebody thinks of something random, they could just pop it in there. Sure. We'll, we'll yeah. monitor the, the chat and the Q&A if there's any industry partner related questions. I'm keeping an eye on that. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, get Matt Baker on to start off our presentation. So, oops, hold on a second. I'm going to make him into a panelist. All right, so just wait for a moment and Matt Baker will be popping up. And okay, so Matt, you just have to unmute yourself. And if you want to put on your camera, we'd love to see you. Okay, oops, he's not unmuting just yet. Um, Matt, we cannot hear you. Okay, if you can unmute yourself. Let's see what's happening. Okay, Matt, we can get back to you if you want. You can put a message in the chat. I'm going to leave you as panelists, but perhaps we should move on to the next, the next speaker. Okay. All right, so Matt, once you get yourself sorted out, just, le just let us know. And so that would be Michael Dillinger, okay? So Mike, you're on deck, okay? And um, I'll just need to promote you to panelists. Okay, so Michael Dillinger, should okay, here's Michael. There you are. All right, can you hear me? We can hear you. Let me know if the audio drops out because I've been having a little funky problem with my computer sometimes. So uh, if it drops out, let me know because I just have to mute and unmute again and it goes back on. Okay, well, first of all, thank you to the board. You guys have been awesome. Uh, great, great job. I'm so proud of all of you and um, so pleased that you are there. I'm kind of happy that I'm not, no. Because <laughs> you guys, you guys have, been, you have been, been working with a lot, a lot more than, than any, any volunteer would have expected. So bravo, bravo, bravo. Okay, so this is a report from the Gannick Certification Committee, our AGM report. First of all, I want to thank all of the committee members, and they are Patrick Casey, Robin Garr, Kit Garrett, Kevin Lawrence, Nina Mende, William Nemec, and Jonathan Turr. And they should all take a bow and you should all give them a big hearty round of applause because in addition to many of them are doing double duty and even triple duty because they're on several committees in addition to some of them being board members so give them a big hearty thank you for all of their hard work the committee at times has been meeting weekly since covid hit to try and figure out what we were going to do because the plan originally was we were going to have two rounds of the certification class during this fiscal year. We had one in January and it was really great. And then of course COVID hit and everything was off the table. So uh, the rest of it was postponed. But the, we get, began to meet via Zoom and to consider how best to serve the GANIC membership during the COVID shutdown. We've held two online programs since then. First was a workshop to help guides get prepared for tour your own city by creating tours that might appeal to a more local traveler. And the second was a storytelling workshop where members worked in collaboration to sharpen their storytelling techniques. And both workshops were offered free for GANIC members. And then just prior to the shutdown, the committee announced the certification maintenance requirements. Anybody who's already certified by GANIC has to maintain their certification by continuing their education. And I'm not going to read all of it because it's very, very long. There is a full document it's, it, 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 that is going to be posted as part of the addendum of the minutes here. Uh, that lists all of the requirements, but um, a total of 10 points are required and we had a various uh, menu of how that could be achieved. And then because of COVID, we worried about that, but with there was there seems to be an abundance of online seminars and courses, fam tours, virtual conferences that we felt that most certified guides could easily meet or exceed the requirements even during COVID shutdown. So um, we hope that happens that we're gonna be towards the end of the year looking at, at who has maintain their certification. And we'll deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis. We understand this is an unusual time for everybody. Now, future plans. The committee, we've continued to meet on a regular basis to determine the future workshop. 
as well as the f future workshops, as well as the full certification class. And we've learned a great deal of how we might enhance and expand the program by using online tools. And we're going to be having a meeting actually next week. The committee meets to discuss further the, the way we might be restructuring some of the elements. And we hope to announce a certification class in the near future. Our goal is to hold at least two complete certification programs in the next fiscal year using the online elements. We believe that using a lot of the online tools may actually make the program more accessible because people won't have to show up in person to a place every week or a couple times a week, whatever. And so it might actually make the program a lot easier for people to attend. We're also looking on how to address issues of diversity in our profession within the certification program. We'll be considering some of that. And uh, there's other things that we're discussing as well. I mean, we, we do believe that certification can actually be a, a tool for GANIC and to drive GANIC membership. A lot of people have reached out to GANIC because of the programs we're offering. And so we might look at that as a way to kind of work with membership and maybe offer a, a, a version of the certification program for non-members and they would pay a premium because they're not members and the premium would somehow incorporate the idea that if they actually became a member, they might save some money and um, join us as well. So uh, we're very excited. We're, we, COVID knocked the wind out of our sails, but we're excited about the future because it is an opportunity for us to get creative and look for new ways to serve GANIC. So that's my report. Unless anybody has any questions about certification. I don't think so. I think, I think we're all set. I think we're good. So thank you very much, Michael. All right. Um, so Matt Baker is ready to go. So take it away, Matt. Thank you, like Mike. You off the screen now. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Sorry about my technical difficulties. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, great. We're all set. All right, so the 2020 GANIC Apple Awards began the second half of our first decade. Uh, we welcomed a new member, Kevin Fitzpatrick, to the committee. Uh, he helped us things like uh, securing our red carpet photographer, some of our presenters, and a portion of the ceremony's script. Uh, this year, in preparation for the 2021 ceremony, which is to be held online, uh, we have welcomed Deborah Blau, uh, Megan Marad, and Gary Dennis, all of whom have already been very, very helpful to the program. Um, sponsorship is the name of the game this year uh, because we are holding the ceremony online and therefore not paying for a cocktail party. No food sponsorships will be possible. So all of the sponsorships are going to be financial. Uh, we have lagged in that department in years past, so the online nature of this year's ceremony is kind of a blessing in disguise. It forces us to concentrate on this very important aspect of the committee's mission. Uh, each year uh, we lose less and less money, but the road to really becoming financially self-sufficient has proven longer and rockier than we expected. So putting all of our sponsorship efforts into the world of finance rather than food ought to help in that. We will see how it goes. Um, also, we're not renting a venue, of course, so the budget for the event has been reduced to slightly more than one quarter of its usual dollar amount. Uh, therefore, any losses we might take will also hopefully sting less. On the flip side, however, tickets to the show have been slashed to 10% of their traditional price. And that's to acknowledge that the reduced glamour you know, comes of simply watching a YouTube video as opposed to attending a red carpet gala. For those reasons, drawing an audience is gonna be as important this year as it ever is. Uh, the good news is that the potential audience whose interest we want to pique can be literally anywhere. Uh, we are already courting potential you know, lifetime achievement honorees who might be located in Hollywood or Washington or something like that, rather than New York, but they're available for an online event to show up on camera. Uh, the same is true for the potential audience. Our organization and our award ceremony has friends and fans all around the world, and this year is the chance to demonstrate their support for a fraction of what it would cost, you know, otherwise. Uh, we also have the chance to make, up, make it up in volume, uh, so it's really up to us to demonstrate that the volume is there. Uh, with the above in mind, we have a host uh, for this year's event, uh, the primary anchor for Channel 7 Eyewitness News, Mr. Bill Ritter. Uh, Mr. Ritter's uh, broadcasting schedule commitments would make participation in a live event impossible. 
uh, but he is available to pre-record his involvement uh, because in this year's show, you know, because it is online. Last year, we continued our mission to explore beyond the world of the arts in the choice of lifetime achievement uh, with the award going to the heroic AIDS activist, uh, Sean McKenna. This year, we're continuing to look in that direction, but we're not ruling out the arts, especially because the world of Broadway theater has suffered particularly harshly and particularly visibly. So, you know, we are definitely considering uh, Broadway people as well as otherwise. Um, now, I am very happy to announce that we have an honoree who has accepted the Lee Gelber Award for Guiding Spirit. Uh, she is a former president of Gannett uh, with a proud guiding career that any new guide can point to and say, that's what I want to be when I grow up. She is also a co-founder of the National Federation of Tourist Guide Associations and has spent unmatched time and energy enhancing the professional legitimacy of guides and guiding, and that is Ms. Marta Sanders Cooper. Uh, questions, concerns, suggestions, etc. to the, or if you want to join the committee, we're always looking for new people, especially for the sponsorship drive. Please contact me at awards at Thank you. Great. Thank you, Matt. Um, I cannot see any questions specifically about the awards committee in our Q&A. So you're all set. So thank you so much for your report. And we'll now thank turn to, um, thank you, we'll now turn to Jeremy, who will be reading the report for um, the Education Committee. All right, hello everyone. So be warned everyone, you will be seeing a lot of me this evening. Um, so I am very proud to give the report on behalf of Nina Mende, our chair for the wonderful Education Committee, which has been working so hard in the past year. Um, in addition to obviously our chair, Nina, uh, we have a great core over the last year. Uh, the members who have worked with the committee core this past year have been Bob Gelber, Andrea Coyle, John Semlack, Kevin Lawrence, Lisa Puccio, Nina Scharf, and Susan Birnbaum. Uh, we also have a um, great number of people who've been acting as contributors and honorary members. There will be a written addendum to this report that Nina has really put together great that includes a number of honorary members, those who've helped out, um, including, you know, Art and Susan Suckerman, who've been doing their, you know, twice a week Zoom sessions, and Joe Spalak, who's giving wonderful uh, fans and many others. There'll also be an addendum that will include a list of all fan tours that have occurred this year, as well as guest speakers, and just a full roster of all the work that has been done by the Education Committee. Um, as you know, the mission statement for the Education Committee is to create and maintain continuing education program for Gannic members that will advance the knowledge of guides of New York City and its environs and enhance the professional development of guides. This is done through the FAM or familiarization tours, guest lecturers, our professional development PDP program, as well as seminars and now webinars, which we will sort of um, continue. So the FAM tours, if you're not familiar, if you're just sort of a, someone joining us, these are these sort of um, outings we do where guides give other guides tours. Sometimes we do outings to specific um, sites uh, and bus tours. The PDPs are done um, in conjunction with the Education Committee and we've done a number of those this year. So the goal for FAM tours is usually 30 a year. Um, we usually actually have topped that this year despite COVID-19. We are up to 37 since the last, um, since the year began last uh, AGM, 37 in-person FAM tours and six virtual with more to come. Uh, we try to do at least one or two bus sort of day trips a year. Uh, we've done a few of those and we hope to do more once things calm down. Next year, going to PDPs, uh, we tried to, we, our goal has always been to do a minimum of six of these a year. This year we have done eight, one that was done in person pre-COVID, um, seven that have been done as webinar PDPs. Um, in addition, there have been the obviously in conjunction with the certification showcase, um, certification committee. And these webinars are here to stay even after COVID. We found this is a great way to do it. In addition to our in-person events, we'll still continue through the education committee to do online webinars, um, not only because this can accommodate more people, uh, because as you can see in the recordings can be available after the fact. So it's a great way to say, sometimes with these things in the past, we said, oh, I can't make it this day, I can't make it this day. With the virtual events, you can make it whenever you want because the recordings will always be there. Uh, the Education Committee is also planning 
and we'll be meeting later this month to discuss future collaborations with the DC Guild. Um, I hope those of you who have seen the Hamilton one that was done. Uh, big thanks to Jim Carr, who's a member of both organizations for that. And again, we will hope to have more collaborations in the future. Uh, we also organized uh, with Bob Gelber on our core, International Tourist Guide Day was organized by our committee. Um, Kevin Lawrence, who is a member of the Education Committee Corps, has also been working through membership in our organization and the new diversity subcommittee. Um, I have worked with the committee to sort of streamline the procedure for submitting FAM tours. And obviously sort of tangential, we have the book club, which Kevin Lawrence has also been um, arranging. I hope some of you have been reading great books and participating in that. Um, and like I said, there will be a number of written addendums to this thinking everyone and, and providing like a full roster of everything we've been working on. But again, I want to thank Nina for her leadership of this committee and the other members of the great core who I've just an honor to work with. And I'm happy on behalf of the committee to answer any questions. Any questions? If you have questions, we can drop them into the Q&A. Um... Not related to education, but I see there is a, a note from Hardy Fippen to, yes, I, I will absolutely give, because um, I suppose there is an education link there, a uh, special shout out to Kevin Fitzpatrick for personally escorting Dorothy, Parks, uh, Dorothy Parker's remains uh, to her final resting place now and her family plot in Woodlawn. Uh, there's a number of articles in the New Yorker and the New York Times about this, um, and big shout out to Kevin Lawrence, I'm sorry, Kevin Fitzpatrick uh, for representing our community and for being such a, you know, great, um, you know, icon for our community and helping to represent Dorothy Parker through the Dorothy Parker Society and other things. So thank you, Kevin. Um, any questions about the Education Committee? But otherwise, thank you. And again, we hope to be having more um, in-person fam tours and, and, and things like that coming up soon. And we're continuing to doing virtual events as well. Yes, yeah, definitely. I mean, Fitz, you did a great, great job. And it's just fantastic. I mean, everybody I've sent the links to just is, is thrilled to pieces. So congratulations, uh, Kevin Fitzpatrick and Lori for her, um, his friend for her great article too. Okay, so our next speaker is going to be Susan Birnbaum, who will be speaking for the es Ethics Committee. So Susan, if you could unmute yourself. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And so Susan, you're up now. You just have to hit unmute yourself. All right, let's see if didn't get that done because uh, I see you're on but you're just not we cannot hear you yet. yes okay can yeah, you hear me now yeah we can you hear can't you see me, though. I don't know why you can't see me but you can hear me yes <laughs> so I'm giving the ethics committee report um, the committee members I'd like to thank them that's my co-chair Daniel Ellis Matt Baker Mike Brenner Patrick Casey Riley Kelly and Jonathan Toro this year, the Ethics Committee has been unusually busy. We addressed several issues, thanks to the committee members for their time and effort. We were asked to determine whether the details of committee decisions should be made public. After much discussion, we agreed that ethics violations would be made public through the announcement page on the Gannett website. This is sent to all members, but without an ability to comment at the present time. Detailing the member's name and the consequence, the length of suspension, expulsion, etc., and an indication of which section of the ethics code has been violated, but no further details. The committee was also requested to codify the sequence of events when a member is brought up on an ethics violation. The committee determined that there was a need for a constitutional amendment to set up the procedure. So we passed that on to the Constitution Committee. In light of, of Gannick's response to Black Lives Matter, the Ethics Committee was asked to add points to the Code of Ethics that advocate for non-discriminatory work practices and that embraces diversity in our industry. The following is the addition to the Gannick Code of Ethics no Gannick member shall discriminate in either action or language against any person or group on the basis of race, religion, sex, sexual identity, ability, or other trait. If a Gannick member witnesses such behavior from a coworker on tour or a traveler on said tour, the member will address the issue in the manner agreed upon between the guide and the tour operator. 
in the event that there is no, that no policy has been agreed upon or no policy can be put in place at the moment of the incident, or a guide who is not employed by a tour operator witnesses discriminatory behavior, such discriminatory, discriminatory action or language shall be discouraged when the guide judges it safe to do so. In addition to this piece of the report, I have asked the co-chair, Daniel Ellis, to provide the report related to the Aaron to Backman issue, as I was not involved. Um, as for our plans, you know, we meet as needed. And if there's any, you can always get in touch with us if you think there's something that we should, um, I don't want to use the word investigate, but address. And, and, and that's basically our modus operandi. We just meet as needed. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Susan. Does anyone have uh, questions? For the Ethics Committee, you can put that um, into the Q&A. Okay, and I see a lot of questions are going by about Tour Your Own City. So everyone, don't forget Tour Your Own City. Um, first of all, Mike will be talking about it when he gives his industry relations report. But if you do not know how to upload tours or do anything with Tour Your Own City yet, all of the information is on the GANIC website, uh, is on, um, the, the GATIC website in the announcements, it explains how very clearly how to upload tours. So log into the GANIC website and then you can find it. Right. I did that. So, um, so there we are. All right, so our next report will be, thank you very much, Susan. I don't see any specific um, requ um, questions. Oh yes, um, uh, Matt Baker, Susan, this is a question for you actually. Did Daniel submit a report on the to Backman issue to the board as requested? That's a good question. I, <laughs> I wasn't able to get in touch with him to confirm it. So Susan will follow up on that for you, Matt. I will follow up on it, yeah. All right, thank you very, very much, Susan. All right, Christina, you are on. Oh? Yep. All righty. So I'm Christina Lombardi and I'm reporting uh, as chair of the Government Relations Committee. During the past year, the Government Relations Committee has taken steps to broaden our agenda and work with local government on behalf of our membership and the tour guide community at AL. Current activities we would like to call members attention to include our ongoing efforts to secure the passage of 289A, greater participation in the landmarking process and the response to the committee's recent COVID-19 relief petition. So first, to update the membership, thanks to the determined efforts of the committee, notably members Leonel Hamanaka and Andy Sidor, we have secured a veto-proof majority of council members, 34 in total thus far, who are willing to sponsor 289A. The committee thanks all the members of GANIC who lobbied their council members uh, in order to help secure their support and advance the bill. The committee is continuing to push for the bill's advancement to the floor and expects to have additional news to report to members uh, on this in the coming weeks. The committee is uh, also in the process of reviewing the text of the bill to ensure that the language used is specific to persons duly licensed by the Department of Consumer and Worker Protections, the DCWP, formerly the DCA, and requires the presence of, quote, at least one employee licensed pursuant to section 20-243 at all times when passengers are on the upper level, end quote. With respect to participating in the landmarking process through efforts spearheaded by committee member Joe Svilak, the Government Relations Committee is working toward having a greater voice in the city's landmarking process. To date, the committee has begun advocacy efforts on behalf of three historic properties or districts. They are 1519 Beekman Street in Lower Manhattan, which is an 1892 classical revival, revival excuse me, skyscraper uh, by McKim Mead and White. The downtown community house at 105-07 Washington Street and the adjoining tenement at 109 Washington Street and 227 Duffield Street in downtown Brooklyn, the former home of prominent 19th century abolitionists, Harriet and Thomas Truesdale. 
While time doesn't permit for me to discuss these properties with you in greater detail, we would like to make you aware that the Landmarks Preservation Committee holds meetings on Tuesday, which the public is able to attend remotely. The next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, September 15th at 9.30 a.m. The agenda is already available uh, in advance on the committee's website uh, for you to review. And uh, those meetings are live streamed on the Commission's YouTube channel. We want to encourage everyone to avail themselves of these resources and become more familiar with the process and the role that we as tour guides can play in it. Um, finally, uh, earlier this year, the Government Relations Committee took up a petition um, to mobilize tour guides behind the proposed COVID-19 relief legislation that would have benefited freelancers as a whole and subsequently us. We collected nearly 1,500 signatures and secured a meeting with Council Member Keith Power's office we also corresponded with the offices of numerous other council members to discuss the proposed legislation. And while elements of the proposal have since passed, our efforts are continuing. A particular concern to the committee is some form of rent relief for New Yorkers impacted by COVID-19. Finally, the Government Relations Committee would like to take this opportunity to thank Jeff Ryback for volunteering to be our secretary and to remind membership that government relations continues to welcome new recruits. Any questions? If anyone has, if anyone has questions for Christina or for government relations, um, you're welcome to pop them into the Q&A. All right. Okay, it looks like, looks like we're all good. So thank you very much, Christina. That's, that was great and very informative. And up next is Mike Morgenthal to tell us about industry um, relations. So go for it, Mike. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, yeah, it's been a busy year for industry relations once again. I want to thank everybody who's contributed to the committee's activities this year, including co-chair Bob Gilber, uh, Chair Emeritus Harvey Davidson, Megan Murad, Deborah Blau, Kit Garrett, Fred Flanzer, Cindy Lidopoulos, Jason Thompson, Christina Lombardi, Eddie Schneller, Lyle Croft, Margot Fox, Amata, Amata Anderson, and Howard Kaplowitz. Um, we do not have, we have not had regular, regular meetings. We had three meetings this year. That's something I want to change uh, moving into the next year. So starting in October, my goal is to have uh, a regular committee meeting every two months. And uh, we're always looking for new people to join the committee. And if anything, if, Ga if COVID has taught us anything, it's that um, getting Gannick's uh, name out there uh, and really uh, having a lot of connections with other parts of the tourism industry, both locally, nationally, and internationally is vital. And that's really what uh, the Industry Relations Committee is tasked with doing. So we welcome anybody who wants to uh, participate in that process. Uh, like all of GANIC, uh, GANIC's committees are, or most of GANIC's committees, our focus shifted to COVID once uh, Red Thursday uh, hit, and by far the biggest project we've worked on so far is Tour Your Own City. We started working on it in April, and it took uh, quite a while for us to get it up and running, but finally August 24th it launched, and um, so far uh, it seems to be going pretty smoothly. We currently have 110 tours listed on the site. Um, they all, they reflect four of the five boroughs. We have a tour that touches on Staten Island, but I'm not 100% sure if it actually goes to Staten Island. So we would love an actual Staten Island tour to be listed too. Not that we don't want other tours to keep being listed as well. Um, just because the site is live doesn't mean that you can, uh, that you should stop uploading your tours. Uh, the more the better, the better inventory. And I know a few questions have been asked, has anybody booked tours through To Your Own City? I know of at least one that has been booked through To Your Own City. But again, since To Your Own City doesn't track, uh, doesn't actually book the, uh, book the tours, we only see the amount of traffic we get. It's up to you as guides to let us know if anybody uh, is converting tours from To Your Own City into actual work, which is our goal. Uh, the program received a big boost last week when we were able to get a segment to air on New York One. Uh, our page views on the website spiked that day, uh, but we need to keep having people get the word out uh, for us. So please, even if you're not participating in the program, it's a rising tide lifts all boats, right? If other guides are going back to work, that means that you'll be able to go back to work sooner than you anticipated 
as well. So follow our social media platforms, retweet, like stuff on Instagram, share stuff on Facebook. If you have ideas for publicity or other things we can do with the site, uh, we are all ears. Uh, we are reaching out to business improvement districts, the MTA, uh, hotel associations, really to try to get the word out as much as possible. Uh, so the more, the merrier, and we're going to keep this program going as long as we deem it necessary. Uh, and it might be able to transition into some other things once this is all said and done, but that's a story for down the road. Uh, one other note that I wanted to, to, to put out there, uh, our web designer, Alexander Jones, who just went above and beyond in working with us and trying to get this uh, out and about, um, he is actually offering uh, preferred rates to GANIC members uh, for either web redesign or web design work, or I think even hosting. Uh, so that is an email blast that we'll send out in the next couple of days with his rates. Um, we, he came to us via Christina Lombardi, who did, he designed her uh, company's website, uh, and he really did a great job for us. And I see that he's actually doing a, a webinar for the NFTGA now. So uh, we have raised Alex's profile, I think. But regardless, he uh, wants to offer GANIC Preferred rates will send out an, an email blast about that um, in the coming days as well. Uh, the other COVID related accomplishment of the committee was tracking lost revenue and canceled tours when COVID hit. Not exactly a fun topic, but we were really the first association in the US and perhaps in the world to start tracking these things and it really helped us make the case via the government relations committee and other efforts uh, that freelance independent tour guides should be included in any sort of government aid that was being offered and uh, we think it perhaps played a small part in what we were doing and certainly helped us get the word out. So we're not actively tracking that anymore, uh, but uh, somebody actually posted on Facebook the other day, are we tracking it anymore? We're really not, but if people wanna keep in putting information in there, it's absolutely fine. It's never bad to have more information than less information. Um, we continue to enhance our relationship with NYC and company. I know for some that might not be as far along as you would hope, but really every year our relationship with them gets stronger and stronger. We were thrilled to have the president and CEO, Fred Dixon, address our membership in June. We were the first tourism association in New York City that Fred spoke to after COVID. So that speaks a little bit to where they view Gannick. Um, in addition, we were asked, we didn't lobby to do this. We were asked to become one of their allied organizations within their recovery um, coalition. And uh, we've been serving on that in monthly meetings and I've been communicating with other tourism officials who can who communicate on that as well. And uh, we're gonna keep working with them. Uh, and uh, and you know, the more cooperation, the better between our two organizations. And I think uh, NYC and company is really starting to see the benefits that GANIC provides to the tourism industry in the city. Uh, industry partners, we currently have 25 active industry partners, not counting the three we're voting on tonight. Last year at the AGM, we had 24. So the good news is we've had seven new industry, apart, industry partners accepted since last year's AGM, uh, but the bad news is we've lost some along the way as well, who chose not to review, uh, renew rather. Um, we talked about this at last year's AGM, it got put on the back burner because of COVID, but we do have a framework for an industry partner reboot uh, that was developed by Sam Cohen, our web developer of our uh, regular Gannick.org site. And um, so uh, now that Tour Your Own City is starting to gain its own momentum, the committee will kind of turn its attention to that and hopefully launch um, that towards the end of the year. Um, job fair. We had many, many discussions about this and we surveyed uh, all of our past exhibitors and there just wasn't a desire on their part. Nobody, they're not hiring at this point. So we made the difficult decision that uh, we're not gonna have a job fair for the rest of the calendar year in 2020, uh, certainly not in person and we were exploring virtual platforms as well. Uh, we actually do have proposals from two different online platforms that do, the, that's what they do, online job fairs that would be within a budget that we can afford. So we will continue to monitor kind of the state of the industry. And it only takes about 10 days to get one of these set up. So if it all of a sudden looks like, oh my God, tour operators need guides, guides can connect with tour operators. We'll launch something in early 2021, but uh, it's gonna definitely be on a, on a you know, monitoring basis, see if it's actually 
necessary because it would be a shame to spend all this money and have four tour operators uh, participate because there's just not the demand, unfortunately, in the industry. Uh, meeting venues. Uh, it's been an interesting year. We, all, we got off to a great start because we had three great venues at the start of the year. New York Historical Society, the Town Hall, which was our first ever money, a morning meeting, or the first one in my time at Gannick, and at Essex Market, where we had a food tour as part of our uh, meeting as well. And then, of course, COVID hit. So um, we don't know when we're actually going to be allowed to go back to having in-person meetings. Um, but when we do, our plan, uh, based on the survey that we sent out to all of you, the Gannick membership, is to at least keep one membership meeting a quarter as a virtual meeting, which will allow people who either can't get to wherever our venue is because it's too difficult locally, or our many uh, friends and members who live outside the city to participate as well. Uh, I will add that uh, all of our in-person meetings will be streamed on Facebook Live, uh, it, if not on Zoom. So uh, there will still be a virtual component to them, but there will be, our plan is to have at least one uh, meeting per quarter. Once we're allowed to have in-person meetings, we'll keep one meeting per quarter to have um, uh, in, uh, online meetings. Uh, last but not least, site inspections. Uh, this year we were able to offer two, both recently. Town, uh, uh, sorry, Top of the Rock, which was organized by Harvey Davidson, and most recently Empire State Building, which uh, was organized by Harvey and myself. Uh, and we look forward to offering more site inspections moving forward. Uh, just as a note, I can't promise you this is going to happen, but I have been in discussions with statue cruises and the National Park Service for us to have a site inspection sometimes in, sometime in late September, early October to really see the new process and security and social distancing measures at Statue and Ellis Island. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so that pretty much sums up what we're doing. Uh, we have some other plans in the, in the fire, including trying to increase our presence at industry trade shows. Um, and uh, specifically, the Student and Youth Travel Association show, CITA, which is a huge uh, part of our business, part of our industry, their annual convention is actually going to be at the Sheridan in August, or at least it's planned to be at the Sheridan in August. So we really hope to have a big GANIC presence there. We've already talked to them a little bit about that. And as 2021 comes in, we'll look to do more of that as well. So uh, lots going on. We could use more help. We could use more hands. Uh, I can stand to become a, a better delegator. Uh, so the more people I have, the better chance of me delegating things, um, uh, delegating uh, projects to people. And uh, thank you all for your time. Certainly happy to answer any questions. I know I went a little bit long. We do actually have a question, Michael, from Cindy. Uh, it's actually a two-part question. And it was, when will the language filter be on uh, to your own city? And once the COVID-19 crisis is over, Will Gannick pay the small domain name to keep renew this domain name? Um, okay, so there is a language filter on there right now. If you go to the site and click on the orange search bar on the left-hand side, all the filters pop down. So the languages are there. Uh, so people can search by any language. Uh, the end users can search by any language they want. And that is also on the form when you upload a tour, you can certainly do that. Um, second question, will we continue to renew the domain name? Uh, that's going to be on a we'll see what happens basis. Uh, the, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. This could turn out to be a shot in the dark that misses and we decide to shut it down. It could turn out to be something that succeeds or it could be turn out to be something that morphs into something else. So uh, while I'd love to give you a concrete answer, Cindy, uh, we just don't know yet. Um, we have budgeted to renew the domain name. Jeremy will get into that a little later, I'm sure but uh, we'll just kind of judge that on a on a case-by-case -case basis. One other thing I wanted to add about Tour Your Own City, um, at least at the moment, we are keeping this within the Gannick family. I know there were discussions about opening it up to other tour guides and tour operators. At the moment, we are not doing that. That doesn't mean that it won't change down the road. If they do participate, they will have to pay a fee, uh, but participation in it for Gannick members, whether you're a full or provisional member or industry partner is included in your membership dues. Great. Thank you, Mike. And thank you for giving a, a lot, a lot of inf information. So um, this was great. So thank you very much. So next is me. So, sorry, guys, I'm putting on my IT committee hat. And um, just to give you an update on, on what we've been up to. And so our main thing was uh, figuring out Zoom. Um, 
lickety split. Once um, COVID started and everybody's talking about this new platform, Zoom, how are we going to do this? Um, that's when uh, we signed up for it. And then the IT committee started a series. We did a little series of training sessions. Um, so it was, um, it was really, it's been working very well and we selected it because it, it's, um, you know, uh, good price basically. And it's very robust and really good, um, um, good system, and I think you've all seen it's it's been working really well for us so far. Um, we did, like I said, we did the training sessions. We've had a series of online meetings, and we've also been able to use Zoom for our committee meetings, our board meetings, uh, other things as well. Um, with regards to the website, uh, Phil Desir updated all the descriptions on the website. So when you see um, the different tours and the different services that are offered, they all have beautiful descriptions that were written by Phil Desir. And Lyle Croft has been helping out with getting people to update your photos. So if you are not satisfied with your photograph, with what you have now on your profile, but you can't figure out how to fix it, uh, you can also con you can always contact IT, and uh, Lyle will help you um, go through that and make your the photo that you'd like to have. Um, we did a new a new red frame also for the Gannick certified guides. If you have a double red frame, if you're a Gannick certified guide and you have the old frame with a new frame on top of it, please um, email IT and we're going to fix that um, for you. We continue to use Wild Apricot for our, our back end um, management. I'm going to apologize to everybody personally for any garbled messages that are going through. We know, and I'm going to say this again, we know because I also get the garbled message. So what happens on my end, not only do I get a garbled message, but I also get 80 million messages from everybody saying, hey, guess what? There's a garbled message. You don't need to do that. And I thank you for your concern, but we are aware and we apologize because this is just a little glitch in the system. And so whenever it happens, I yell at Sam and he tweaks things a little bit more. Um, as Mike mentioned, um, industry relations has, um, there's a new phase in the industry relations partnership with our, our different industry partners. And um, we're going to hopefully be updating the website soon with that. Mike has been so busy with Tour Your Own City and um, I've been busy with other things as well. It's sort of fallen by the wayside, but it is there and it just needs to be launched when we can actually breathe for a moment. And then when we did our survey, there were questions about the website. Um, shortly after our last um, uh, monthly membership meeting, we had an IT meeting and we went through all the questions and we're going to be addressing some of the issues that um, people brought up um, in those um, answers to, to the survey. And so finally, I just want to thank my wonderful committee, starting, of course, always with Mark Landman, um, chair, emeritus chair of the IT and web committee. If your password needs to be reset, if something's not working, if your profile is not live and is, needs to be tweaking, Mark is the guy who always takes care of things. So thank you so, so much, Mark. Every IT email that comes in, he sees it too. And if he can fix it, he does it, usually within 24 36 hours. I'm also grateful for the assistance of my other committee members, um, Lyle, um, Phil, Stan, Diana, Mark, AJ. Um, all of you guys have done um, such great work. It's often unseen, but it's much, much appreciated. And I'd like to thank um, the PR committee with Jeremy and education with Nina, um, industry relations with Mike, um, uh, Morgenthal, and membership committees with Derek for, their, for working with IT, for being patient with us, and um, for so much you do to get, you know, Gannick's public face out there on our website, our social media, our events announcements, our registrations, webinars, all of this. Um, the committee is, has like all these little baby committees, everyone working um, with us. So thank you all for that. And thank you for helping make my work as IT committee chair um, go, go smoothly as possible. So any questions for me as, as IT? I don't see any. Okay. All right. Well, let me then bring in Derek, okay, who's going to be speaking about membership. I just have to turn him into a panelist. All right, Derek, you're on. Okay, there he is. All right. So thank you. Okay, go, Derek. Hey, hello. Hello, welcome everybody. It's uh, Derek Chan, your membership committee chair. 
Uh, just a little bit of an overview in terms of our numbers right now. So as of today, September 9th, 2020, uh, GANIC as an organization, we have an active membership of 376. That includes 266 full members and then also 113 provisional members. And in terms of where our members are from, I was just kind of curious about this myself. So I was taking a look earlier. The majority of us, about 8% are New York City residents. We have about 10% who reside in the great, wonderful, fabulous, amazing state of New Jersey. We also have uh, one person in Connecticut and about 7% are from New York State, but outside of uh, New York City. And we have uh, the rest about 3% from outside New York, outside the tri-state area. That includes places like the DC area that actually has our greatest number outside of uh, this region in Maryland and Virginia, we have about six uh, members and then also members of Texas, Florida, North Carolina, Nevada, Pennsylvania, the state of Washington. And we also have at least one international resident uh, that I'm aware of uh, currently residing in the Netherlands uh, of all places. We do have uh, new applicants who do continue to apply for membership uh, each month. And as a reminder, the primary requirement for becoming a new member, for becoming a member of GANIC is having a current New York City sightseeing guide license regardless of where you live. And right now is probably the easiest time that it's ever been to apply because in the past for our new uh, applicants, we've had an in-person uh, meeting with the board, but now all those are being done virtually. So it's uh, a lot easier to uh, become a member. So if you're not, if you're considering it, uh, something to think about. Uh, also, uh, first time member dues are currently prorated uh, as they have been in years past. And also over the past year, we have had uh, past lapsed members who have come back to GANIC. So we've had um, strong numbers in terms of members who um, have become members this past year. And the reason that, um, that we do have all this is because of the strength of our membership. The activities that we've been doing have increased the reputation or visibility, uh, especially in the virtual environment. The top driver though continues to be, as far as new members applying uh, ourselves, personal referrals. So if you've been doing that, thank you, keep it up. And I'm um, looking forward to more of that. Um, specifically, as far as the number of new members that we've gotten since the last uh, AGM, it's been 42 new members, which is actually a little bit more than the previous year. We've also had 17 provisional members uh, who've met the requirements of becoming full members. And as a reminder about what that is, when you first join GANIC, you start out as a provisional member. And then after a minimum of one year provisional membership, you have uh, the opportunity to uh, request full membership. Uh, so minimum of one year of full membership, of provisional membership, you also need two letters of recommendation from full members and have attended uh, four membership meetings like this one, which includes virtually, and then you can uh, request full membership. As far as the uh, membership committee, I do want to recognize our current members. Uh, they include Deborah Blau, Pat Mazuka, Charlie Nessner, Mel Wasserman, Jeremy Wilcox, Tony DeSanti, and Daryl Riley. I do want to thank them all for their participation. Uh, and also our past committee members as well, the members of the board and GANIC admin Sigma Nolte for their support. Pre-pandemic, the most visible committee efforts uh, were in-person events, including checking in members as well as non-members at uh, monthly membership meetings. The membership committee does continue to focus on membership recruitment and uh, retention, providing more value and benefits to members, including making those benefits easier to access um, as well. Our past events have included uh, monthly and occasionally even biweekly new member uh, applicant meetings that interviews the potential new members, all of whom have been accepted as provisional members this past year. Uh, as uh, Emma mentioned earlier at the start of the meeting, we also had our annual post-holiday party at the Novotel, New York Times Square on January 13th, our annual post-holiday social party for members and invited guests. We had an in-person networking happy hour on International Tourist Guide Day at New York's Grand Street on February 21st. And then we also had a couple of uh, virtual events. We had two virtual happy hours and showcases back in May and June as well. 
In addition to that, as far as making uh, benefits easier to access, there is a new internal membership benefits uh, web page. That's a collection of resources uh, in a single place that does get updated. So if you are just hearing about it now, if you have been looking at it in the past, uh, check it out again. It's ganic.org slash benefits, and you do have to be logged into the website. And it'll have things like links to the digital library, submitting for leading SAM tours. You can view a list of industry partners, the newsletter archive, social media sites for industry associations, including ours, the pre-nomination form for the 2021 GANIC Apple Awards, a link to the To Your Own City guidelines and instructions, among many, many other things. So it's a great resource to uh, frequently go back to if you're wondering what are the benefits of GANIC and how can I access them and take advantage of them. We've also introduced um, other new membership benefits, including the new uh, GANIC Guide uh, name badge. I'm wearing it right now. If you were watching Jeremy Wilcox on uh, New York One recently, he was also sporting it then. And uh, right now we have about, um, I believe it's about 25 members who have ordered, who have received their uh, name badge. We have a few more that have ordered them. Um, we are, of course, accepting new orders on a continuing rolling basis. So if uh, you want to purchase your own GANIC Guide name badge as a member, just go to the membership benefits page, ganic.org slash benefits, and you'll find all the information and instructions on uh, ordering that there. We've uh, also created a new membership welcome packet that includes things like uh, GANIC lapel pin, a lanyard, and a few other goodies. So for those who have become members this year, you will be receiving that um, soon. The uh, public membership page has also been revamped. So this is for anybody who's not a member and interested in becoming a member, ganic.org slash membership and the application itself has been streamlined and that does well. In terms of uh, the future outlook of things, our membership numbers will likely fluctuate uh, just due to regular attrition, happens every year around the time of dues renewal. Uh, but this year we also have the additional fiscal impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has also uh, limited in-person events, of course. Uh, we haven't had any in-person events since February. However, we have been taking advantage of uh, virtual options and uh, future virtual events are being considered for future networking happy hours, uh, new member orientations, and perhaps also some form of a virtual post-holiday uh, party. If you have um, any questions that you want to field offline or suggestions, you can feel free to email me and the committee, membership at gannick.org. Uh, that's for both members and non-members alike as well. Uh, but I'm also happy to uh, field any questions right now if I have the time and if there are any as well. Okay, I, I don't see, Derek, I don't see any questions in the Q&A. So thank you very much. That was great. And actually, I, I love my, my membership, my, my name badge. It's really good. It's got a really good magnet. The ones they give us at OWO are not as strong as the ones Gannick has. So there we go. So thank you very, very much, Derek. Um, John Semlak, you're up for, um, for the multilingual committee. So thank you. Uh, is, can, you can you hear me, Emma? Yep, we can hear you just fine. OK, thank you. Um, thanks. Uh, um, first of all, as just I'm going to say as secretary, thanks. Uh, thank you to all the committee heads who sent the reports and are giving their reports orally. Uh, so I, I greatly appreciate that and keeping Gannett going and doing so many uh, amazing work in the committees. I just want to thank um, every committee for that. Um, well, the Lingual Committee, I, I pray we, we got a little bit sidelined by COVID. Um, we did have two meetings prior to COVID, uh, and we discussed uh, how we would make the, we would sort of stream, you know, just formalize our, our role in monitoring the quality of languages spoken by multilingual guides who work under the GANIC banner, um, and uh, making sure that our committee you know, not not just to make it sound too scary as if, you know, people will be rejected, but we just want to, our committee have a role in it, and we will be um, uh, formalizing that later this year. Uh, <clears throat> we also wanted to, to improve our effort to recruit multilingual guides. One of the things we suggested was that we would translate pamphlets that have the benefits of GANIC into multiple languages, for example, things like that. Um, 
our last meeting was, was sort of one of the last meetings of GANIC that was held in person. I remember it quite well because we had it at WeWork. There was some debate at that point in mid-March whether to have live meetings. Uh, and, um, you know, you know we, we had decided at that point it was still uncertain. We, we wanted to have an official open for business uh, motto for GANIC. And so we went ahead and had the meeting. And then later I found out that we were informed by WeWork that there had been, you know, mem people in the very, in the, the floor where we had had a meeting and had, you know, COVID and we were kind of giving an award. It, 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 it wasn't as scary as it sounded at the time, but I, it was, it was an anxious period, let's just say. Um, so we haven't had a meeting since. Um, I, we do uh, plan to have at least one meeting later this year, but I, what I would like to say uh, as, the, uh, as the multilingual chair is that uh, Tour Your Own City does offer, uh, that does allow you to list your tours by language, as Michael Morgenthal said, all the languages that are available on the Gannick.org website are available at Tour Your Own City. And I have uh, seen that at least five languages are being offered. Uh, mostly the big European languages. I want to, uh, so um, I, we're, I'm going to be go, reaching out and seeing if anybody else is going to be offering tours uh, in other languages. Uh, and, you know, it is a bit of a shot in the dark whether it'll be successful or not. You know, tours, you know, obviously our multilingual guides, international markets are limited. So there's very little, you know, you have to rely upon the local market. And I know some guides are doing well or, or at least get, uh, they're doing tours, uh, multilingual tours with a local multilingual market. But that's obviously very, very different than what you normally do. But I do want to hear of anybody offering multilingual tours on tour your own city, whether anybody's getting tours and things like that. So if anybody is having any success with that, please let uh, me know. Uh, that's uh, all I have to say. I'm going to turn it over back over to Emma. Great, thank you so much, John. Any questions of the multilingual um, committees? Okay, um, Adrian said she couldn't see any way to search for tours by language. I think that's um, that's for tour your own city. Okay, so um, uh, Kevin is going to speak to that. Okay. Oh no, I think nope. That somebody else was clicked on it wrong. Okay. So anyway, so um, about tour your own city with language, um, Mike, do you have an answer to that? about people looking on the Tour Your Own City website for other languages? Um, if you go on the homepage, on the search bar, there is an orange button right there with three kind of dials on it, right next to where it says type here. You will see the boxes that pop up and right in the center, uh, of the top column are the different languages that tours are available in. Okay. All right. So I think that will that will help. Okay. Uh, has anyone offered a virtual tour in another language? Well, I know um, that uh, people have been doing virtual programs in other languages, or some of our Italian guides. Alessia has been doing them. Um, Patrick von Rosendahl has been doing lots and lots of. Um, live streaming and other information in Flemish. Slava so, Spiegel um, has been doing one, several in Russian as well, and awesome. he's actually doing live tours in Russian mm -hmm. with a local Russian community. Uh, you know, that's very successful. But yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's obviously very challenging, I know, for multilingual guides, though, you know, if you're relying upon the overseas market, we don't even know when that's going to come back, so. Yes, okay. All right, so thank you, John. All right, I'm going to bring in Dave Gardner now for our um, newsletter. Okay, so Dave, I'm promoting a panelist. Uh, should be popping up in just a moment. I'm waiting for his entrance. Um, so Dave, you're, okay, there we are. Here he is. All right, you just have to unmute yourself. Oh, here he goes. He disappeared into his fish tank and now he's coming back out. All right, there we go. All right, so just unmute yourself, Dave, and you'll be all set. <laughs> good evening, everybody. Good evening, friends. So, uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Madam President. My name is Dave, and I've been bringing us our newsletter guidelines. Uh, I have to disable this. Okay, so uh, we have two people on the masthead, myself, and also our deputy editor, Linda Fisher. 
we get contributions from people that we call staff reporters, people with things like tour reviews, book reviews, organic event coverage issues, and so on and so on, as well as a presidential column, and then occasionally a personal column. For participation, we've attended every monthly GANIC meeting in memory. We've also represented our committee in orientation meetings for members, provisional members. We expect to continue our quarterly cycle of production. We have a new newsletter every quarter. And now the template is 12 or 16 pages. We've determined that anything more would be unfeasible, impractical, and unreadable. And by the way, I thought it would just be short on stuff, what with the pandemic, but thanks to everybody, we have come through with a 16-pager as usual. So well done, everybody. That means you. That means you. So after the mailing ceremony, we feel that the hard copies are delivered about a week later. Uh, we publish a website version, and that sometimes has additional stories and pictures. So there's no compensation to us, but we have expenses, printing, mailing, and typically I stamp them and mail them myself, but we, thanks to Linda, we've been having the company do that. So we pass, but we print all the expenses on to the group's treasurer. And last year, thanks to Linda Fisher, we have reduced the costs, yes. So it's uh, slightly a little bit more uh, because of the mailing service directly from the printer, instead of us doing it manually, or still below budget, thanks to Linda Fisher. And uh, so no need to restore the, the funds that we've had previously, as Linda Fisher would say. So this is our newsletter, thanks to you. And since I know you'll be asking, especially Madam President, there is a deadline, and that will be October 2nd. You can find it in your copy anyway. You can see us on the but on the second page in lower left, as is always the deadline, October 2nd. Second, which will be a Friday. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Dave. And I do love getting it in the mail. It's kind of gratifying to have the the hard count, the hard copy. And uh, yeah, I put the October second deadline. I put that into our chat. Okay. So thank you, Dave. I love the entrance. I love you bursting through the fish tank. That was very, very nice. And um, so Jeremy, you're up next for PR. All right. So thanks again, Dave. I'll take you off as a panelist now. Okay. Hello, everyone. It's me again. So actually not PR related, but we had a couple of questions. So I'm just going to very, 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 very quickly share my screen. So here on the Tour Your Own City website, where Michael was saying right next to the, the bar, you have the main tour menu here, but that's just to each borough. If you go down to the main search bar under the logo and click these little buttons here, this is where you can customize it by day, by language, tour type, by borough. And that's for the customer's end, and you can set that all in yourself. So I hope that um, helped. So again, um, I'm Jeremy Wilcox. I'm your public relations chairman among um, many other things. So I want to first thank some of the people who worked with the PR committee over this past year. Um, and that includes Stan O'Connor, Megan Murad, um, AJ Stevens, Michael Morgenthal, Robin Gar, John Semlack, Deborah Blau, Christina Lombardi, Laura Peterson, Amada Anderson, and Derek Chan, uh, who've helped out with my committee. So what the public relations committee does is we basically exist to advance the stature and the public face of the organization and to raise the profile of professional New York City tourist guides and our roles as ambassadors and educators and our important role in the New York City economy as well. Uh, that's definitely something we worked on this year. So we basically make the public and the media aware of what GANIC is doing. We are basically the public facing committee for GANIC. We are the ones who let the public know what GANIC is doing outside of just New York City tour guides in these communities. We are how the public knows what GANIC is doing. Some of our regular efforts involve operating GANIC social media accounts, specifically Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, uh, operating an internal sort of YouTube channel for GANIC members, running the GANIC website's blog, um, and publishing press release for regular and ma major GANIC initiatives, speaking to the media about tourism issues in our bi-weekly e-newsletter, uh, which you know has been sort of put on hold in, in lieu of the um, 
bi-weekly Virgil newsletter during this crisis. Um, some of our non-COVID successes since the last AGM include scoring a TV interview on PIX11 News with uh, Emma Guest Gonzalez, where she discussed the Battery Park ticket seller issue, um, as well as outreach to the first precinct of the NYPD after member Cindy Ladopoulos was assaulted there by one of these ticket sellers, which resulted in an official police report and an official Gannick visit to the precinct. Since the COVID crisis began, we have had numerous media coverage on behalf of our work for tourists and for tourism industry at the following outlets, New York One News, twice, um, Politico, WFUV News, PIX11 News, The Associated Press, WNYC and ABC7 Eyewitness News. Um, so we will continue this work on behalf of our industry because tourist guides are not really appreciated as professionals and the PR committee is always there to get it. Um, I'm really proud of the work my committee has done and the, the board has done on behalf of getting Gennick's name out there and showing how important tourism and tour guides are to our economy. And we will obviously continue that and to continue to keep everyone apprised of the changes that are happening with our organization and the industry. So thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, any questions for PR? And um, one thing I just want to remind you, use your social media and tag Gannick. Tag Gannick like mad, retweet anything that comes by on our, our Twitter page. Um, really, we the, all those hashtags, all that social media is all good, so please, make sure you do that, okay? So our last but not least, we're going to have Jonathan Tour coming up. Let me just get him in um, as a panelist and he will be discussing the Constitution Committee and talking about the Constitutional Amendment, okay? So Jonathan, when you're ready, you can go for it. And what I'll do, I can do is also a screen share again to show everyone the, the PowerPoint. All right, so let me share the screen. All right, Jonathan, do you want me to do that now or do you want to, do you, why don't you give your report and then I'll put it up. Yeah, I'll do the report. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Are you in your car? I am. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. And it does. Glorious, <laughs> glorious automobile, automotive studio here. <laughs> um, so, uh, after the last, oh, I'm Jonathan Tour. I'm the uh, chair of the ad hoc um, Constitution Committee. Uh, after the last general election, with the support of the executive board, the Constitution Committee was reconstituted after having largely gone dormant following the 2012 revision of the Gannett Constitution. Several legacy members rejoined, including Mike Brennan and Matt Baker. Uh, neither was interested in chairing this iteration of the committee, so um, I took that position uh, as a rejoining member as well. Uh, new members, Patrick Casey, Jeremy Wilcox, and Riley Kellogg were welcome to comprise the entirety of the committee. Our primary goal was A, to better define the process of managing ethics code complaints, and B, to clarify the election process regarding candidate eligibility, which was also related to ethics code violations. In collaboration with the Ethics Committee, we co-wrote changes to the bylaws that were implemented last month. We also wrote the bylaw change, creating an improved process for announcing bylaw changes. Uh, and our final project of 2020, again, in conjunction with the Ethics Committee, was to create a proposal uh, improving the Constitution's clarity regarding ethics code complaints. This proposal is going to be discussed briefly or shortly. <laughs> uh, our goal for the next year is to review the Constitution to see if there are any minor housekeeping uh, notes to be done, uh, clarifying any vague language and cleaning up the document if necessary. At the moment, we don't envision the committee uh, is going to be continuing beyond 2021, unless there's a, an extraordinary situation that uh, demands it. Uh, we required no funding from Gannick this year and don't envision any expenditures in the future. So that's our report. So um, questions for the Constitution Committee. So what I'm going to do actually now is I'm going to share this, my screen again and show you all the, um, the amended language for the Constitution. Okay, so just give me one moment. Okay, there we are. All right. 
So this is the language of amending the Constitution it's for Article 14 um, about maintaining the aims and standards of the association. So you want me to read that out loud real quick? Sure. All right. Uh, this is the proposed amendment and I can read the uh, former amendment or the current amendment afterwards. Proposed amendment is any member failing to maintain the aims and standards of the association including but not limited to violations of the code of ethics shall be liable to disciplinary action up to and including expulsion in case of a complaint against a member the matter shall first be addressed to and considered by the ethics committee with at least one elected executive board member present which shall investigate the complaint the member shall then have the opportunity to represent themselves before the ethics committee no later than 48 hours after the ethics committee's determination, the member shall be presented with the committee's recommendation. The ethics committee will then make their recommendation to the executive board at a closed hearing, which will be held no sooner than 48 hours after the member has received the determination of the ethics committee, at which the member shall also have the opportunity to represent themselves before the executive board. The decision of the executive board shall be final unless within 30 days of an expulsion the expelled member makes an appeal to the executive board in writing uh, for an extraordinary general assembly. An extraordinary general assembly may be held in person or through a virtual service, which shall be free and accessible to the majority of members at the discretion of the executive board. The purpose of the extraordinary general assembly is for the membership to vote to confirm or overturn the decision of the executive board. The extraordinary general assembly must be called by the executive board between 60 and 90 days after the notice of appeal is received by the executive board. A quorum of half of the full membership must be present or represented by proxy at this extraordinary general assembly. To become effective, the vote must be carried by a simple majority of members present or represented by proxy. If a quorum is not met, the decision of the executive board shall stand. Members who have been suspended will remain listed as members on the GANIC website, but will not have access to the members only section. They cannot attend meetings as members and cannot participate in FAM tours, PDPs or other GANIC programs for the duration of their suspension. Once the suspension is completed, the member is then fully reinstated and all membership privileges will be restored. The decision of the executive board to suspend a member shall be announced, but not debated or discussed online in a form such as the announcements page and will include only the suspended member's name, the length of suspension, and an indication of which section or sections of the ethics code that were violated by said member. No further comment is warranted unless under extreme circumstances as determined by the executive board. Okay. And that's the proposal. All right. Let me stop the share and let's, okay. So the, thank you, Jonathan. I think the language was slightly different, but it's basically that the, the um, ballot that you will be receiving has that language on it. So you should all be receiving that um, you, uh, in your emails, but please wait to vote until after any discussion is completed. Any questions and specific questions for, for Jonathan, you Jonathan, you'll be able to see them in the in the Q and A. If anybody has any specific questions about this amendment, otherwise, um, I see one person raise their hand. So, um, if you have a question, please type it into the um, into the Q and A. Okay, Rhonda. Ron Simlack wanted to know if this is where my Wi-Fi was best. It is not. It's where my son is practicing soccer, so that's where I am right now. Dedication. Dedication. <laughs> I had to turn my volume off because my son just had another skateboarding accident. So yay, boys. All right. Oh, boys. <laughs> yes. All right. So any... Um, okay. No specific questions about this. I think we're all set. So everyone, your ballot was just sent out. Okay, you all full members will be receiving it or if you have should have received it already. Okay, and you will vote on that. Um, you know, when you when you have a chance. Okay, perhaps after the meeting or if you want to do that now. Um, go right ahead. I do see a question. Um, there are no proxies Harvey because everyone all full members who can vote are given a ballot to vote. So 
there's no need for a proxy. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. I think that Thank was. Thank you very much. I think that was it. And we had our vote and that has gone through. Okay. So let me, all right, let me hold on a second. All right, so I'll take Jonathan off now and bye. Good luck with the soccer. Okay, all right, so now our next topic of discussion will be the um, bylaws. So hold on a moment, please. Let me just, I'll do another screen share. Okay, um, just a moment, everyone. Sorry about that. So the bylaws, this is not a vote per se, this is a for your information and you can submit comments or suggestions to the board. Okay. And so I'd like to ask Patrick Casey to unmute himself and read this to everyone, please, Patrick. There we go. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> All right. In, okay. Uh, this is an additional bylaw. It is an answer to Gannick's, supportive of Gannick's commitment to the Black Lives Matter movement and our efforts to eliminate racism from the tourism industry. No Gannick member shall discriminate in either action or language against any person or group on the basis of race, religion, sex, sexual identity, ability, or other trait. In the event that a Gannick member witnesses such behavior from a coworker on tour or a traveler on said tour, the member will address the issue in the manner agreed upon between the guide and the tour operator. In the event that A, no policy has been agreed upon, B, no policy can be put in place at the moment of the incident, or C, a guide who is not employed by a tour operator witnesses discriminatory behavior such discriminatory action or language should be discouraged when the guide judges it safe to do so. Again, any questions or comments may speak now or address the board by email. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Patrick. Let me stop the screen share a moment. Okay, do you see Q and A? Other trait, says us, Jim. Yes, we employed other traits in case there's a recognition of another distinctive feature. We will tolerate no discrimination basically on anything perceived, uh, anything outside the perceived or societal norm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Patrick. And everyone is welcome to send their comments directly to the board at gannick.org. Um, um, before we get to uh, to the budget presentation, just Rhonda, I hope all you all saw um, the, the company, um, her company US Guided Tours won a Traveler's Choice Award. So very, very good. Um, so let's, uh, without further ado, let's let Jeremy take the floor and we will have our budget presentation. We We'll be going a little over with this meeting, but it's the AGM, we always go over. So um, everyone, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get through it um, as quickly as we can. So go take it away, Jeremy. Thank you very much. Okay, everyone. So uh, we're gonna be going over the budget. I'm going to try and keep this as uh, tight as possible. Um, and then obviously I'll be happy at the end to look in the Q&A um, if there are any questions about, or just anything that we'll need clarifying. So I'm going to start my, uh, give me a second here, screen share. Make sure I've got everything. Bear with me, folks. Ah, there we go. That is not correct. Hold on. Again, bear with me, folks. I'm just Pulling this up. Um, while I'm waiting to get this up, uh, I'll just actually go over a few notes that are not in the presentation. Um, one is obviously the basis of our budget is our membership dues. Um, the membership dues are currently 
dollars per year for member that will remain the case in the next fiscal year. Uh, we we, the board, believe that you are getting a fantastic value for that. Um, we've actually worked harder this year than in any year um, that I've been on the board so far, um, and we will continue to. Second note is actually about insurance. Um, so we are finalizing the details with the insurance company, uh, but the current plan will actually be a significant change in the way that members acquire their optional liability insurance. Normally, you acquire it through us here at GANIC. As many people have brought up in the past, the NFTGA, the National Federation of Tourist Guide Associations, offers all members of their association members access to basically the exact same liability insurance policy. So with the next year, we are going to actually be getting our insurance through the NFTGA. It's basically the exact same policy. The main benefit to you um, will be that it'll actually be cheaper. Sure. We are getting a much larger group policy it will be less expensive, but the same coverage. We, again, we are still waiting for the insurance company to provide us the exact details, as well as details from the NFTGA on how you will be able to purchase that uh, come the end of the year. So that'll be a significant change in terms of insurance. Um, the other thing I would note as a reminder, as I go through the numbers in the budget, our fiscal year begins on November 1st and ends on October 31st. So in terms of the actual numbers for this fiscal year, some of those are incomplete as there may be some more expenses toward the end of the year. So, okay, I'm gonna begin my screen sharing and hope I get this correct. Um, okay, so we're going to begin the presentation of the GANIC budget. It's the moment you have all been waiting for. So, uh, just notes about our current finances this is as of Monday morning when I last checked this um, in our Santander checking account, we have $5,235.50 in our Santander savings account, we have $12,737.89. So I'll go committee by committee and then you'll see the things at the end. So key note with these three columns, the first column there, the fiscal year 1920, that's our current fiscal year. Uh, that is what was budgeted last year at the AGM. The second column shows to date what has actually been spent this fiscal year. And the final column there shows what is being proposed by the committee and the board for the coming fiscal year. So we're starting in alphabetical order. This is revenue that came in through the awards committee. Um, you could see they, you know, program ads, sponsorships, and ticket sales. I actually will note for the awards committee, they came in above what they expected for ticket sales. Um, so for this coming year, as Matt mentioned, his report, the awards will be going online. So there won't be a program. So there's no revenue expected for program ads. I'm hoping to get in good money from sponsorships and ticket sales. You can see they're budgeting $1,000. That's um, with an expectation that the tickets will be $5 each. So that is the proposed revenue for the awards committee. Going to expenditures, you could see the different categories, the after party, equipment rental, the hosts. There's always a miscellaneous column for each committee. Um, music, the photographer, posters, pre-event receptions, programs, room and hall fees, stage manager, trophies, videographer. Now, some of these will not be the case. You could see if you look in the proposed uh, you can see several of those will be zero because those will be not necessary in a virtual ceremony. And one thing I will also note as we go through each of the different categories, you'll note that every committee has been asked this year to come in with a reduced budget. Uh, we are sort of knowing that this will be a very different year and a, a potentially tough year for our industry as we sort of transition back to normal. Um, and so we've asked every committee to come in below what their normal rate would be. And I think you will see that every committee came through significantly in that regard. So as you can see, the awards committee came in pretty close to what they budgeted. They were pretty good about keeping that on track. So we're going, going to move on here to, sorry, certification committee. So this obviously changed because as Michael noted in his report, they did not get to do multiple courses like they expected. So revenue wise, they didn't bring in as much as they anticipated. Um, and then in terms of expenditures, obviously didn't spend anywhere near what they anticipated in that regard. Um, but one thing you'll notice is while they did bring it in, they are anticipating to continue to be very active. You can see the numbers there, what they're 
participating to bring in. Um, and again, the actuals are based on the fact that there was only one course this year instead of the expected two. So going next to the education committee, you can see both the revenues and expenditures here. So FAM tours were, so the reason there are revenues with FAM tours, there are some FAM tours, like some of the bus trips, the trip that was done in early March up to the Croton Aqueduct, where we actually do bring in revenue. So that's what that is. There are some PDPs where we had previously charged, um, and that's the revenue for that. We actually only had, um, I believe, one PDP uh, this year where we charged. And note that the Education Committee will not be charging for PDPs anymore. We've decided to just to make that free to members. So there's no expected revenue. Um, and I'll just note there, you'll see $1,000 miscellaneous actual. That was actually a donation. So the Education Committee got an anonymous donation to provide a series of PDPs. That is the marketing PDP that has been ongoing with Jennifer Ackerson. Hope you've been enjoying that. That was made possible because of this anonymous donation. We cannot anticipate such a future donation, so that is zero. Expenditures include expenditures for FAM tours, for the bus rental for those FAM tours, honorariums and donations, both for those giving PDPs as well as guest speakers at meetings, typical miscellaneous column, and then the cost for hosting those PDPs. You can see the committee is still planning to offer a lot of great programming, but is coming in below um, budget. So those are the numbers for the Education Committee. And again, I'll be happy to go over these again at the end. So going into revenue for the Industry Relations Committee. Um, actually, I, yeah, go back to that later. But for the Industry Relations Committee, you could see they came in just slightly below what they thought for renewals, but considering everything going on, that's pretty good. Um, and they are keeping their projection for next year, more or less what they had it for the previous year. Job fair fees, they were anticipating we would spend $500 on the job fair. There will be no job fair this fiscal year, so that's going to be zero. And then next year, we are hoping by next fall to be able to do a job fair again. So again, budgeting 500 for that. New industry partners, they plan to get 1,900 new industry partners. We've only gotten 760 so far, but they are optimistic with this revamped program they're doing, we'll get back to 1,900. New category that was added uh, was the potential, like I said, we're still unsure what, what we'll do with this. Um, non gannic members who might become a part of Tour Your Own City. We had one who came in in advance of that, um, which was um, someone who actually ended up becoming a gannic member. And this is just an anticipatory number, uh, anticipatory number here in case we decide to um, open up Tour Your City to non gannic members. Again, that is in fluctuation. So they are participating, um, anticipating bringing in more revenue next year as the sort of uh, relaunch of the sort of program comes into effect. Now expenditures, there are a couple of categories here. You can see conferences and related travels that falls under industry relations, the job fair, meeting room rentals, which includes our monthly meetings when those were in person, professional organization dues, tour your own city is a new expense category you can see in there. And where it says WT, uh, sorry, WTFTGA and NFTGA, that was for these conferences we have every year. Um, we were anticipating to spend 5,000. We spent this year 4,000, but that is being folded in to other categories. So that category will be eliminated next year. And again, the job fair, you can see not spending any money on that, but anticipating that that will happen again as well as hoping, again, anticipating that conferences and related travel will return next year. Professional organization dues, this includes, again, NFTGA, NSTYA, and other organizations we are a member of. New category that is being added for the coming fiscal year is a $500 line item for promotion. This will include decals and other things for the relaunched industry relations program, but still see coming in under budget versus last year. Membership committee revenue. So obviously most of our revenue as an organization because we are a membership organization comes in through membership. So first, um, also I'll come around to this, but obviously membership renewals, we believed that this year we would get $42,000 in member renewals. We've actually come right on the cusp of that, even with COVID, even before the end of the fiscal year. So we feel pretty good about that. Um, I'm getting a note from Michael Morgenthal. He said NFTGA, WFTGA is zero because there is no w WFTGA conference for 2021. The category will return for 2022. Thank you, Michael. 
So we are anticipating that with the situation, we might unfortunately have a dip in membership renewals. So that is why we are anticipating less for the coming fiscal year in terms of membership renewals versus what we have this year. Um, I am hoping that this will be a pessimistic number and that you guys will all renew. Again, we really believe we have been going above and beyond and we are planning to continue to go above and beyond next year. So for new members, the committee plan that we would hope to get $5,000 worth of new members. We've actually, again, done very well under the circumstances is how much money we've made. But again, we'll be a little bit realistic and anticipate we'll get about $3,000 in new members. Member badges is a new category. I will note that this is revenue neutral. Every dollar that comes in to pay for the badges is what goes back out to pay for the badges. So you can see here we are anticipating to bring in $260 but that $260 will go right back out to pay for the badges. This is a revenue neutral line item. And the last thing I'll note coming back up here, um, revenue from the holiday party and what we actually spent, this is zero because as I think was already obvious, we will not be able to have a holiday party um, this coming fiscal year, which is normally in January. There's just no way it will be safe uh, to have an event of that scale in person in January that will return in the following fiscal year um, once COVID is under control, but there just will not be a holiday party this year, unfortunately. Um, going into expenditures, sorry for the membership committee again. Holiday party, we did go over. We anticipated we would spend 6,000 on a holiday party in January. Um, we had more people, there was more food, we had more um, drink comps, so we went over um, a little bit this year, as you can see, significantly, uh, which was sort of my job as chair to keep that under control. That was my bad. And again, zero dollars being spent on that because there will be no holiday party. General membership mailing, we anticipated we would spend $1,000. We did not spend that much. Uh, this is what we are anticipating we will spend this year. Again, membership badges is a new category and is totally revenue neutral. We anticipated a miscellaneous spending of 500, spent exactly that and we hope to spend exactly that next year. Um, interesting note in terms of budgeting, so we anticipated we would spend $12,000 on networking happy hours, one a quarter. We um, did have one networking happy hour, which was the one in February, but we actually had a significant refund from previous one, which actually brought us into a negative number for our expenditures because of, again, that refund that came in, which was greater than the amount we actually paid. We are hoping at some point by the second or third quarter next year to return to networking happy hours, and that is budgeted at 900. Orientation sessions we did not get to have uh, this year. We're hoping to maybe do a virtual one soon. Um, these are for new members to help orient them into the organization. So we're gonna budget the same amount even though we didn't get to spend that this year. Membership committee printing costs. You can see we're bringing down by half because we didn't spend that much, um, particularly with things going virtual. Supplies, this was a special category where we significantly went over, as you can see. This was due to the creation of some of the new member packets, uh, ordering more lanyards um, and ordering more member pins. Because we now have a massive surplus of these materials, we do not need to spend nearly this much, uh, certainly in the next fiscal year. So bringing that down to the realistic portion. Uh, but note, particularly due to the loss of the holiday party, how significantly these numbers are changed. So we came in close to overall budget on the committee, but we are anticipating to bring that down next year. Multilingual Guides Committee, uh, they anticipated both revenue and expenditures would be 250. The committee did not get to be active. John touched on that in his report. Um, we're not anticipating bringing in revenue through this committee, but anticipating that there might be one event that cost 250 for the Multilingual Guides Committee as it works to sort of relaunch itself in this next year. Government Relations Committee um, does not bring any revenue, so I just didn't put anything in there. It never has brought in revenue, will never, so I just wanted to just note that. Um, the main expenditure is Destination Capitol Hill. We budgeted and spent $1,500. That event did not take place. We're still hearing, waiting to hear when that will be rescheduled, but we anticipate going to Destination Capitol Hill again in the next fiscal year. And then just $250 for miscellaneous. Newsletter committee, again, no revenue there. Um, expenditures include hard copy printing for the actual newsletters, just a general miscellaneous budget and the postage for mailing them. Um, hard copy printing, basically almost exactly on budget, so we're keeping that the same. 
Miscellaneous was budgeted 100, but only spent 999, so knocking that down to 50. And postage will end up coming in close to the budgeted 200, so we're keeping that the same. So the overall anticipated budget for next year will actually be just $50 less. It's a pretty tight budget um, in terms of their committee. Public Relations Committee, again, no revenues there. Um, advertising and collateral, we anticipated we would spend 3,000. We spent 1,600 to date, so I'm knocking that down to 2,000. Collateral, we anticipated 500, only 183.09. I've removed that because I'm folding that into miscellaneous. So we anticipated we would spend 500. We spent almost 500. So I'm combining collateral miscellaneous at 750 anticipated budget. Online tools, which largely includes the MailChimp account um, for the public relations, we anticipated we would spend 2,000. We've spent just a little over 1400 so far. And we're budgeting again, 2000 but you can see where we anticipated we would spend, what we've actually spent, and what we anticipated the next fiscal year will be, or PR. IT and web committee, again, no revenue there. The expenses are domain registration and related expenses, miscellaneous, updates, maintenance, and hosting, and the new category, Zoom. You'll notice while there was only anticipated the budget 250 for miscellaneous, it's been 1,000 so far. That's where we um, put this Dropbox accounts that we used to have. We are dropping that every next year as we move toward Google Drive and a new category is being added in for Zoom. Domain registration, we're keeping the same even though we've spent less. Updates, maintenance, and hosting went over budget this year. We made a number of changes to the website, um, which we hope you have enjoyed. We're anticipating spending more than we budgeted last year, but less than we've spent this year. And so this is the total anticipated budget. You can see we still have come in overall under budget for the IT committee, um, but keeping it down versus what we anticipated last year, even with the new Zoom category. Now this is miscellaneous revenue that's not part of any specific category, which includes initiation fees, these new member initiation fees, late fees for people who renew late, no-show fees and online payment fees, this category had a number of refunds, which is why it's actually negative, and is being eliminated next year because we are no longer charging members online payment fees. One thing I would like to note here is we anticipated we would bring in $400 from no-show fees for FAM tours. Please note we actually brought in more, uh, over $730 to date on no-show fees. Please, please, please do not no-show FAM tours. Do not cancel at the last minute. We charge you for that, and we would ideally like this number to be zero, but we are anticipating bringing in about 500 from that. Um, we've actually come close on initiation fees, again, because we've come close on our membership uh, pro projections. Sorry, just gonna go back. Um, Non-committee income includes interest, miscellaneous income. You see the totals are more or less accurate and will stay the same. Miscellaneous expenditures. Administrative expenses include banking fees, miscellaneous expenditures, um, which is where we put Zoom this year, which is why you'll notice that number is higher than anticipated, our office rent for our WeWork space, our part-time administrative assistant, SID, stationery and printing costs, supplies, our voicemail service, and wild apricot. So bank fees we're bringing down because we actually didn't spend that much. We're bringing this down because that number included Zoom, which is now accounted for in the IT budget. And we're keeping our budget for office rent the same because we work is not charging us anymore. And we're knocking down what we anticipating to spend on our administrative assistant because you can see we've spent much less. A lot of what our assistant did was help with in-person events. And we're not sure what the status of that will be. And there really haven't been many this year. Stationery and printing is being brought down. We anticipated 800, barely spent that much, 500. Supplies were keeping the same even though we haven't spent any this year. And the voicemail will remain the same because that again that's a fixed cost. Now we anticipated having to spend two grand on wild apricot. You'll notice that it has gone up as our anticipated amount. The reasoning for this is wild apricot charges its users more, its or its organizations more, depending on the number of members in its contact list. We continue to grow as an organization, and so so do the costs of that administrative backend. Other expenditures include corporate insurance and legal and professional fees. Corporate insurance will remain the same as far as we know, and we are anticipating spending a little less than we anticipated on legal and professional fees. So these are the overall totals. 
So again, we anticipated bringing in about $77,515 for the year. This is what we've actually brought in, pretty close. This is our proposed total revenues. So a little less, again, we're hoping to be that we're too pessimistic and that uh, everyone will renew and these numbers will explode. Um, this is what we were anticipating we would spend this fiscal year, over 106,000. We've only spent about 67,000 and we're anticipating about that same amount for the next year. So again, bringing all the numbers down, I'm trying to give you a realistic budget uh, that again, we will hope will be too pessimistic. So thank you guys so much. Um, again, I'd be happy to take a look. I'll stop my screen sharing here and I'll be happy to look at any questions that there might be. So good question from Michael Dillinger. This is a very good question. He said, for Destination Capitol Hill, if it did not take place, why does it show expenditure? So for the members who were going to attend Destination Capitol Hill in March, we gave them the money in advance. We advanced them the money for that and then it didn't take place. So we basically said, what I said as treasurers, hold on to that money. And if it does happen, we will expect you to either go or refund us. At this point, what I am saying to people is, hold on to that. And if you go to the next one, whenever it takes place, you've already been paid. If you decide you're not gonna go, you will refund Gannick the money. Because of what ended up happening there, in the future, we will not be pre-funding people for these type of travel expenses and stipends you will be reimbursed after the fact to avoid this unfortunate slippery uh, situation. Greg Morrow asks, are wild apricot fees based on Gannick members using the software? So um, it's not really based on how often you use it, it's just based on the number of contacts that are in our, our sort of list, not only members, but applicants. And because we are growing, so is the cost of wild apricot. Richard Sanford asks, where do we stand on reporting to the IRS? Uh, so we do have to file a tax return as a not-for-profit organization. We do have an accountant. Um, that's one of our administrative costs. We have an accountant who files our taxes. Every year, the treasurer gives him all of our financial information, and then that return is filed. We did file a return this year. So yes, we do have to report as a not-for-profit organization to the IRS. Elaine Work asks, is the, Elaine, sorry, uh, is the office being used during COVID? Will you change vendors in the future? WeWork has been having a lot of problems as a company even before COVID. Very good question. Um, the office is being used. I have personally been there a few times during COVID. Um, we may change vendors in the future depending on what happens with WeWork. Our budget for office rent for this coming fiscal year is with the anticipation that we will continue to use the WeWork space. In addition to board members using it as an office, it's also where everything is stored. We have cameras, files, all sorts of equipment. In the past, all of that was floating around various apartments of, of board members, very unwieldy. A big part of what we use that office space for is just storage for everything. Any other questions before the, the um, about the budget? So I'm being told that the budget vote for full members has been um, uh, mailed out. So I'll be happy to answer that. Oh, Emma says, I need to correct the total for IT. Um, in terms of what they asked for last year, yeah. I will double check that and make sure that when before this document gets posted to the website, um, that I, I double check all of the, the numbers. Thank you, Jeremy. Yes, and, and, and because uh, someone else brought it up below, if we were continues to have problems, not just COVID related, but as an organization, they have certainly been in the news a lot, we will certainly look into moving offices. Um, at this time, we continue to be at WeWork. Yeah, and like Jeremy said, they do collect all, we do get all our mail sent there. We have a lot of stuff in, in the office itself. And um, we are, uh, Jeremy, myself, Christina has gone down there too, to check our mail and to make sure um, that everything's coming in. So we, we hopefully eventually we'll be having in-person meetings. Um, I do have to say one thing to give we were credit they they informed us um, a while ago actually that um, we could use other WeWork locations 
um, if that was more convenient to us um, because of COVID. If people need to switch their spaces, they could move to um, have their meetings in other spaces as well. But yeah, we're definitely keeping an eye on things. Yeah, Jeremy, go ahead. I just also wanted to note, um, because the ballot, I'm sorry, the, the votes for the for full members for the budget have gone out. Um, if you are a Gmail user like me, um, sometimes Gannic emails go into the promotions tab, um, not your primary inbox. Actually, I, that's where I just found my uh, email about the budget. So if you're a Gmail user, um, check your promotions tab, or just if you're not seeing it again, check your junk or spam folders. And it'll hopefully be in one of those places. Okay, so um, I think, think that's it. Okay. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, everybody. Uh, are there any comments or anything that the board would any other board members would like to would like to say anyone would like to to bring anything up if Christine and Bob if you turn your screens on for a moment too then we can see everybody All I right. just want to jump in there's a, a note in the chat from uh, Frederick um, that says that he's been enjoying these virtual meetings and that he hopes we can continue them so we've already sort of discussed this and I think our, our plan is and what we sort of budgeted for is we're going to do even when we return to in-person meetings one virtual meeting per quarter, so for a year, um, just to help people who can't make it to regular meetings and because it does seem to be very useful. Yes, so so board members, everybody say cheese, I'm gonna take a photo for every, of, of us because uh, we need to have a, you know, an annual general you know, meeting photo. So I'm gonna to try to do this. Um, and mm -hmm. so everybody smile and I can see the, the chat is up so people can see people's names there too. Make All sure right, it's so an organic member badge in the frame. Yeah, I should have worn mine. I'm sorry about that. All right, so thank you everybody and everybody say cheese. And you get it. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. And um, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is, you know, this is how we got to do it nowadays, but it is a lot of fun. And I have to say, um, I like knowing that everybody's there. I think at one point we were up to 99 participants, which is pretty darn good yeah. for a big old and budget. I, I just also want to add, you know, again, we really hope you'll all renew. Again, we're going to be working just as hard in the next fiscal year. Um, remember, the fiscal year begins November 1st, so that's when renewal notices will start going out on November 1st. Um, and I think, you know, I, I believe uh, Kit Garrett, among others, sort of said, if you break it down, the 125 dues per day is something like 30 or something cents um, a day. And it's, you know, I, I just think I, I'm maybe tooting my own horn, but I think it's a great value and we hope you'll uh, stick with us. Yeah, it is. I, I did the math too. It's 34 cents a day. Okay, 34 cents a day. I know, you know, we're, you know, like public radio, you, yeah. we, we rely on you guys. You don't get a tote bag, but you do get a lanyard and you can get a, a membership um, badge. For just 34 cents a day, you can adopt a Gannick board. <laughs> you can, you can um, do all the fun stuff that Gannick does. So anyway, so thank you everybody once again. And thank you board. And I love seeing all the all the chats and the thanks. So enjoy the rest of the evening. I'm going to have a large glass of wine right now. And um, thank you all. We will see you at the next one. Remember, always get in touch with us is board at gannick.org. We're always there. You can always find one of us. And I think you have most of our cell phones too. So we expect text. We're good with that. Okay. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Go Gannick. And we'll see you all very soon. Bye now.